Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. I'm Volodymyr Solohub. Right now we're in Odessa, where more than five months ago a new chief of Odessa Regional Customs was appointed. And uh, right now, join me now the unprecedentedly young chief of notoriously corrupt uh, Odessa Regional Customs, Ms. Yulia Maroshevska, is joining us to talk about the main challenges she's facing at her work. Ms. Maroshevska, welcome to Ukraine Today. Hello, I'm happy to be here. Um, many thanks again for finding the time to come and talk to us. So, Ms. Marshavska, um, more than five months ago you were appointed as uh, Chief of Odessa Regional Customs and um, the, the customs uh, service in Ukraine has always been infamous for being highly corrupt. And um, one of the tasks you were vested with was to fight corruption in this, in this area. And when you were appointed there was a lot of criticism and a lot of skeptics. Um, about how you will be able to do to cope with that task given your young age and lack of experience in the customs business. So now looking back at the five months of your work, how are you doing? If we'll speak about um, Ukrainian customs uh, in general um, and uh, the level of corruption, uh, in people's perception it is one of the most corrupt uh, uh, area institution that we have uh, in Ukraine at all and when I came here it was one of my goal to eliminate corruption and actually it was uh, not the hardest one because the goal I was pointing to myself and to the whole team uh, the, the goal where we were moving uh, was the creating of a new service in, in the customs creating an Ukrainian customs as a really service organization because uh, now uh, the difference is uh, in the attitude and in the procedures. Like now we have a customs uh, completely crazy about uh, control, not the security, but, but the control. Like I'm completely about security. I, I think that service and security are the most important things in the customs. But here it was about control and no trust to business. And our goal was to change this focus to trust and simplif simplification of procedures and uh, to creating a normal business equal eco climate to everyone who is uh, coming to work to Ukraine. But to do that you mm -hmm. need to change the laws yeah. and for that you need the support of the parliament. Yeah. Do you feel that you have the support of the parliament in your endeavors? Mm -hmm. we, we've done first steps uh, on this uh, long road. And now we have quite good results. The time of, cust of clearance in, in Odessa customs uh, is four times uh, faster than it was before. The corruption is uh, dramatically eliminated because uh, we understood that corruption is very often uh, vertical uh, at these institutions. And when you say, uh, when you have a political will to, to overcome it, uh, it happens. Like in, in half a year, almost half a year when I'm here as a chief of customs, in Odessa, we, the situation changed a lot and I think you, you can talk to business and uh, you will hear that there is no uh, bribing in this huge scale as it was before. Of course, we're just on our way and it might, might be some small issues, but we are fighting with, this, with the small issues also. How did you achieve that? How, how, because we, we've just discussed that to, to change the, the procedures dramatically, you need to change the laws. You said that you made the first step. You said that you simplified the procedure. How, how did it work? Uh, how did it happen? Okay, uh, let, let's go this way. The question of corruption is the question of a political will. And second, it's a question of a salaries. We have a ridiculously small uh, salaries uh, on a customs. It's about like 70 US dollars. Uh, but... So, did you raise the salaries? Right, right, now, right now, no. But it's in our project, next steps. Uh, but we had a political will and we changed uh, the people at the middle level and I think it helped a lot because we, we, we fired some, uh, we, hired, we hired a new one and it was helpful. About simplification of the procedures. Yes, we cannot do it through the general legislation uh, from the level of the whole country, unfortunately. Uh, we were promised to have this opportunity, but right now, because of a political situation, because of all this 
you know, negotiations, uh, no understanding of who who will be the next yeah, prime basically minister. Yeah, political crisis. Yeah, you know, all this mess in the, at the parliament when people do not vote for anything and uh, not interested in the real things right now. It's more about politics now than about doing something on the ground. Uh, this is why we 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 did everything we could do on the regional level. Uh, for example, we, we were... How, tell me, how did you do that? Uh, through the orders to, the, to our uh, officers, to, uh, through the creating uh, and, uh, uh, some rules, because uh, the, system, uh, this, the system worked very unpredictable here, and the business who were coming never knew what to expect. Like, first steps that we done, for example, were uh, creating uh, a low-risk uh, uh, country list, creating a low-risk uh, company list. We were, uh, we, uh, through monitoring of the history of the company, through seeing uh, like um, its uh, no, legis the, the way it is legislated, for example, if it's an international company with a good reputation, uh, and we can monitor that, if it's a public company, if we, we can if we can trust this company, then I ask my officers to be as supportive as possible and to, not in a minute, you know, but uh, through, uh, to, to do as fast as possible all the existing procedures. But right now, we didn't change the global procedures here. Yeah? My main goal is to create uh, new customs here with re really existing uh, one-stop shop on the border, one face on the border, you know, uh, this one window concept, really to make it happen because today we have all these different control agencies uh, uh, on border who are doing their job separately very often and it can be a problem. But now through negotiations, through MOU on the regional level, for, for example, the next step were, which we've done after this uh, uh, after the creating of this uh, list of uh, lo low-risk uh, companies, uh, then we signed the memorandum of understanding with uh, with all um, enforcement agencies of the region uh, about uh, cooperation on the customs. We asked them not to terrorize business in Odessa customs, if, if to say directly, because before that we had. Uh, a huge problem when each uh, enforcement agency can could could come to cast to the customs and stop business, physically inspect it without any ground under that any, any cause, and uh, we stopped that very fast. Like it, it was like first months when we came, and uh, right now the number of physical inspections of goods done by other agencies on Odessa customs. Uh, was eliminated 10 times. Ms. Marszewska, what is the reaction to your drastic reforms, to your drastic changes within your own office? Because you just said that uh, the, uh, in, in any government agency, the, the main uh, people are the so-called mid-level uh, employees. Mm -hmm. These are the ones who, who decide things. Of mm -hmm. course, there are top, uh, people on top who sign. There are people on, on, on the very bottom who do the things manual. But the mid-level management is very important, as in any organization. And you just said that you, you, you put them in a very strict um, uh, frames. Mm -hmm. You, you uh, change the rules completely but you did not increase the salary. Mm -hmm. But let's be frank, these people were living out of the bribes. Mm -hmm. So how do, they, how do they treat all these changes which you're introducing? D do you see sabotage? Uh, you see that's a, a multi-level process. A lot of them uh, went from Odessa customs to other customs. We have a practice when I see that some businesses who used to work in a corruption environment, uh, they just changed the customs. They went to do the custom clearance to Kyiv or somewhere to the western borders uh, from Odessa. And, and those customs officers who were working with them, they go to that customs also, like completely client-oriented service, you know? Well, so it, it, it was a client-oriented <laughs> service already. <Yeah. laughs> you didn't way, have to change yeah, much. Yeah, in some way it was. And uh, th th this is one level. Another level is that uh, uh, we, we are not forcing people. If you don't want to, to work like that, you don't have to. 
you're always free to, to go. But uh, our position is zero tolerance to corruption. As soon as I see or know or figure out that somewhere something is happening, these people are being punished any, any way I can, with bureaucratic uh, procedures, even with, 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 with firing. Like everything I, I, I can do to punish this uh, corrup corruption, corruption moments, we're just doing very strict in this case. But we still have a problem with the middle level. We still have this resistance because the first perception was that, hey, they are like children came here to, uh, that's a playground for them, they don't understand, we are an experienced one, and I have 22 years of experience and uh, we, we'll, we'll manage them. We, uh, we'll wait for a few months and they will go or we'll, we'll, we'll do something uh, Figure out the, all the yeah, ways. Yeah, yeah, we'll figure out the ways. But the situation is that uh, today I am uh, the chief who spent it uh, actually six months here, and it's more than any other person in last three years here. Here, last three years they have fifteen chiefs of Odessa customs. Like people were like, no one spent here more than three months, and after spending like five even more months here. I understood that the perception is dramatically changed right now. They realize they, they that you're not going away. They, re they realize that I'm, I'm not going anyway. We are determined to do the project, to open the new customs clearance zone, to simplify the procedure, to eliminate the corruption. And now they, some of them started to believe in us and to trust what we are doing. Mm, they really believe that we one day we will make a normal salaries. And for me, it's just a question of time because I understand that if we are speaking, that we are developing the country, if we are really creating a country that develops, we will come to the point where the procedures will be simplified. We will come to the point where the salary of the governmental officials will be normal, like not $70, because salary of $70 is a legit legitimated corruption. Like it's just a right to be corrupt. It's it's very bad practice. Yeah, it's it's all over across all government agencies in in Ukraine. Ms. Mishoska, to implement mm -hmm. uh, some of these reforms, you need uh, the uh, support, both institutional but also legal support mm -hmm. from uh, the the higher up officials, uh, basically from your boss, from the chief of customs um, service of the entire Ukraine. And um, your relations with Mr. Nasirov uh, are tense, to say the least. How, how do you work around that? Understanding that, in most cases, Mr. Nasirov is not supporting, uh, is not willing to support you as, as the chief of Odessa Regional Customs, but at the same time, he cannot say it publicly. And, and just recently, there was a Kyiv Post article which uh, titled you as one of the most reformist government officials, whereas your boss, your direct boss, they said that he's the, the one who is one of the worst halters of, of the reforms. So can you tell us a bit about your relations with your boss? Our relations uh, must be professional and uh, I've tried to have a completely professional relations and uh, to communicate all the needs that uh, we have here in Odessa. Mm, the, the thing is that I was appointed actually by the president together with the governor of the Odessa region. And uh, at the beginning, we had a normal cooperation and normal communication. Maybe because they didn't believe that we can achieve something. I don't know why. but. After like last time, after all this uh, political tenses between the, go the, the governor and the prime minister, like the situation changed uh, dramatically and it's really hard now to, for me to appoint the people, to hire, to fire, to do all, all the steps. You know, we are a very centralized country uh, and uh, for example, my deputy is being appointed by the uh, Mr. Nasirov, uh, the head of the checkpoints of the crossing point on the, on the borders, they are appointed by the Nasiro, nevertheless, that I have to manage these people. And it's quite hard to 
to do even everyday work. And I feel the lack of this cooperation right now. And I really need it to, su to succeed. But on the other hand, it's not going to stop me even if I don't have this cooperation. So how do you work around that? Um, how do you work with people who are supposed to be your deputies, but are appointed by your boss? We, we had two of them. Uh, and uh, one miss, she was uh, caught on, at the moment of like, bribing, like, like, not, not exactly, I don't want to just to, 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 to tell the story wrong, but uh, it was some problem with the corruption. And the second uh, person also was just, we had a documentary, um, we had documents that proved that he was uh, guilty in some manipulations. And I, I just gathered all these documents and uh, sent him a letter that I need to fire these people. And now I'm just not working with them, that's all what I can do. And I hope that he will fire. The, the, the first girl, girl was moved somewhere to other customs. And uh, the second guy is, is he, he's not, uh, I, th I, think, I think he, I asked just to not to give him possibility to uh, work. And uh, we are not, just not working. What are your main plans for the nearest future in terms of reforming? the uh, regional customs in yeah. terms of fighting the, the corruption. What are your plans? Uh, my plans didn't change. I came here with uh, main goal to create the customs as a service organization. Uh, actually, if I, if I can stand up, I'll show you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Like the concept is uh, to, to open the new customs clearance zone uh, on the, um, uh, on the in the center of Odessa. It's uh, the territory of Odessa port. And this custom clearance zone will, will be working in a com with a completely new approach. It will be an open office, uh, we'll change a software. It will be just a modern uh, customs with uh, a normal attitude and with a completely uh, separated uh, processes. Like uh, we'll separate front and back office, we'll cre create an electronic queue, uh, like everything will be as mm, automatized as much as possible to eliminate any possibility for, for corruption. This is like goal number one. And now uh, I hope that we, we, with the cooperation of the US Embassy here, we'll create a, also a security uh, mobile group here in Odessa and we'll develop like one more important sector. Like for me, service and security. That's two main areas which are important in uh, Ukrainian customs. Do you see your personal future here in Odessa? Yeah, it depends. I'm not, you know, I, I, I understand that I'm not the person that will spend like the whole life in customs, but I'm more project oriented. I, I want to create a real change, to provide the real result. That's, that's my main goal. But I cannot tell you what it will be like in half a year, in a year. I have no idea where it goes. I just know that n now I have this goal. How concerned are you about the current political crisis in Ukraine? Uh, it creates problems for me here in Odessa, trying to implement this uh, transparent office. But as a citizen, I'm, of course, uh, disappointed. As a person who participated in uh, Maidan, I am very disappointed, you know. Of course, I, I want it, everything to happen completely different. I want uh, honest people working for, for a national interest. That, that's what, what I'm dreaming about. I want us to, success, to, to succeed as a country. And all this bargaining in parliament, it's just, for me, it's... A, humiliating us for, for a citizens. It's not what I am expecting from the officials, from the MPs that, that, that was chosen by the Ukrainian people. Yeah, it looks like this is the sentiment which is shared by a lot of Ukrainians. Ms. Morshevska, many thanks for finding the time to talk to us. We were discussing the main challenges at uh, Odessa Regional Customs Office with um, the, cha the, the chief of Odessa Regional Customs Office, Ms. Yulia Maroshevska, I'm Vladimir Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.